What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Glad to have you here today. Uh, I think you know what time it is. You probably saw the title on this episode. We're going to be playing some Stranded Deep today, so they just updated the experimental branch with the escape criteria, so you can actually beat the game right now. It's somewhat up in the air. I've been reading around, and it seems like there may not be enough parts to make the gyrocopter in the experimental branch right now because the spawns are bugged. But other than that, uh, there's a way to actually beat the game at this point. So without further ado, let's dive on in. Let's play the game for a little while. This is pretty much like the game that made my channel what it is today, oh so many years ago. And so I'm really, really happy to share it with all of you. Uh, we do have the ability to make our own character if we wanted to right now. Well, not make our own character. It's pretty much like there's two characters. There's a male and there's a female. You pick between the two of them. You don't get customize them or anything else like that. Although I do think adding some customization options would be pretty cool. The ability to change around what your survivor looks like. Uh, I would love to see that. But let's start the game off. Uh, we've gone with a random island right here. You have two different options. You can basically take a standardized map that's like the same every single time. Or you can take a randomized map. Uh, which means that the islands will be all moved around. They'll have different spawns on them. Stuff like that. I like the game randomized. But, you know, play to your heart's content in whichever direction you'd like to play. Uh, we're going to start it on off. Here we are, all alone in our private jet. Ah, uh, life is so hard when I'm cruising in my private jet. Uh-oh. My private jet seems to have come equipped with an extra hole. This plane must be made by Boeing. <laughs> it's definitely not an Airbus. Oh, boy. All those tax subsidies and still can't keep the wall from falling out. I don't think it's supposed to be listing like that either. Like maybe we we're just turning really sharply. The pilot didn't seem worried, so I'm not going to panic just yet. In case you didn't know, this plane also comes equipped with a jacuzzi. Uh, it's got jacuzzi mode. Because it's just that much of a baller plane. Now let's go ahead and... Can you actually dive down during this part? I've never tested, like, if you can dive down deep underwater during this part. Like, how deep down can you actually go? Do you just get eaten by some random shark or something if you try to do it? I'm going to jump on this raft right... You know what I didn't know? So I was streaming this game. I stream pretty much every day of the week over at Twitch TV slash Splattercat Gaming. I was streaming this, right? And apparently all airplanes come equipped with a raft. I had no idea. It's like an FAA guideline or something like that. They all have to have a raft, even if they don't cross water. It's crazy, right? I had no idea. All right, so we're starting out just chilling, uh, just having a good old tropical time. Here's our first island. It's usually a good idea to sort of, oh, hello, shark. How are you? Do, 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 do. So I don't want to get that stuck in your head. I didn't want it to be that kind of episode, I swear. Uh, we've got a paddle right now. I say we go ashore briefly and for a moment. This will more than likely not be the final island that I settle on. Uh, it's usually tempting in this game to kind of settle on the first island that you find just because there won't be any threats on that island. But I would actually highly recommend that, like, you learn the basics of the game. So, like, the first time you play the game, definitely uh, start out on an island that you start out on. Uh, basically, like, build on this first little island. But once you get comfortable with, like, the tech tree and, like, what to build and where to build it, uh, make some weapons and start a new game, you know what I mean? Uh, make, make a new game, make some weapons, and then actually try to find, like, a, bitter, a bigger, better island. Like, that one right there's got rocks on it. It's usually, if you see, like, a big mountain or, like, a big rock in the middle of the island, it tends to be a little bit larger by comparison. Hello, crab. How are you doing here today? You know, I'm just crabbing along. Walking sideways, pinching stuff, trying not to get thrown into a pot. You know how we do. I'm like, I do know how we do. I spend every single day of my life trying not to be thrown inside of a pot. Been fairly successful at it so far, too. I'm on a bit of like a 30-year streak. Mm. I only say a 30-year streak because when I was a baby, my mom used to like bathe me in a pot. It was a different time, okay? It was a different time. You have a giant cook pot. You gotta, like, heat up the water, and then you put the baby in it. And you wash the baby in a pot. You guys didn't get washed in a pot? Am I the only one here that got washed in cast iron cookware? Hmm. I'm feeling remarkably left out. Actually, this island isn't as small as I thought it was gonna be. It's actually got a really nice space over here, too, for building, where we could make a pretty sweet pad. Uh, taking a look at your watch, if you hold down the F key, there's a number of meters you need to be aware of. You got health, you got hunger, you got water, and you've got sun protection factor. 
Uh, so you can get heat stroke now. Apparently that's a new mechanic that they've added. What I like to do when I land on any new island is I like to check all the wrecks first. Uh, I think this game is supposed to take place in kind of like a Bermuda, almost like a... I don't know, like a Bermuda Triangle type of place. So there's wreckages and things of ships like everywhere. Uh, and you should check all of them. There's usually lots and lots of extra things that are going to help you out inside of those ships, like modern goods. Uh, if we don't find anything super swell here, I will more than likely relocate to a different island. But it is a good idea that we check all the boats first. Uh, one thing you will want to be aware of if you're in water that's more than like waist deep, there is a chance that a bull shark will come along and try to like bite you. He's kind of this ever-present menace that just lives in the water and tries to mess with you. Don't step on that right there. If you step on that, you're going to have a bad time. Definitely don't step on that. Otherwise, you're going to have to find some pee pee. I'm not being crass. Uh, there's a plant called a pee pee plant, and that thing makes you super poisoned, and you got to you gotta eat a pee pee plant in order to uh, in order to get better. Ooh, we got wood containers over here. Okay. What's, what's in here? Anything good? Ooh, a little bit of lag there. Perfect. All right. Where's the shark at? I know he's around somewhere. Shark's got to be here. The lionfish. Don't touch that either. You touch the lionfish, you're going to have a bad time. Listen, if you do anything in the ocean, you're going to have a bad time, all right? The ocean is not the place for us. We are terrestrial monkeys. I don't understand why we always insist on having to explore everything and go everywhere. The search for novelty, really, really, really. It has cost us a lot of explorers and a lot of lives, all right? That's a situation. Got caught in the doorway. Luckily, you can get through it if you just click close and then go through it really, really fast before the collision kicks in. All right, perfectly functional. Uh, we'll throw all this stuff on the beach real fast, and then we'll go over there. Our SPF should be good because we're in water right now. Uh, you can get your SPF back by either going underneath trees or by getting inside the water. It's up to you. You can do either or, whichever makes you happy. I'm going to come back for the balls that are over there on there. Those buoy balls right there, uh, they allow you to make a raft. And let me tell you, the crafted raft is way better than the survival raft that you start out with. All right, so what's up with this big boat? Oh, Stingray, a little sea pancake right there, just hanging out. All right, so let's go ahead and we will check this boat for anything what might be useful for repurposing. There we go. Uh, I don't know what's inside that crate. We'll check it in a minute when we get out of here. Uh, now is not the moment to count our chickens before they, ooh, there's a sea snake over there. Yeah, I see a sea snake. I see. I swear to God, this is like one of the few games that got like the ocean. Oh, that's a grouper. I don't know if groupers will bother you. I don't know if like groupers are hostile. In real life, groupers actually do try to eat like scuba divers and stuff. But like, I don't know if within the context of the game they're dangerous. That shark is dangerous though. <laughs> Definitely not in the mood to tango with him. See if we can make for sure real fast. Yeah, there he is. He's coming. He's coming. Oop. I've been hammered with the head of the hammer. There was two different sharks. So it wasn't just the hammerhead that got us. There was also a bull shark around. Hammerhead's going to dither out there for a little while. We should probably do our best not to tempt him and get ourselves into trouble. Probably just leave it alone. I don't know. He's got a wonky head. That's what he's so upset about. Have you ever wondered why... why why hammerhead sharks seem to be so dispro disproportionately grumpy. Because they got a weird head, man. It's just you're bored with a weird head one time, and like one person makes fun of you for having a weird head, and then all of a sudden you're just like mad at the world. Uh, that leather right there, we're definitely going to need that. Duct tape, definitely going to need that. Those are both really useful. Cloth, absolutely going to need that. Flare gun, not so much. Flare gun, not quite as useful. Uh, these crates right here, though. What have we got? Another flare gun. We've got a lashing. That's helpful. Another lashing. Actually, as far as crate loot goes, not too bad. Actually, pretty acceptable. The extra ropes are actually going to be fairly paramount to getting started. Uh, at the beginning of the game, the biggest problem you usually have is a variety of ropes that you have available for lashing things together. Uh, if you don't have enough ropes, you can't really advance in this game. We've also got a container over here. You know, I'm sort of tempted to stay here. I know I said we were going to migrate, but actually we can knock the walls off of this container and we can use it to, like, build a house. I don't exactly know how I'm going to get on this boat. Like, there's got to be a way to get up there. But it's an oddly spawned boat. 
It really sincerely is. I can get the crate right there. There should be another box or two boxes inside. Hmm. It's possible the container wall is blocking a hole in, in the side of the hole that we're supposed to be able to get through. But yeah, there should be like one to two more lootable things up there. We should be able to get after them either by building ourselves a crafted ramp or by putting our raft up against the side of it. Or B, we may be able to get in there by breaking down the storage container, which I think I'm going to repurpose to make my house anyways. Nice, a flashlight, man. Definitely appreciate that. Okay, all right, we're off to a pretty decent start. We got one more boat over on this side that I think I'm going to try to plumba. And then I think this is the last one. However, we are getting shark music right now, so, you know, gird your loins. The shark might be in a bit of a, might be in a bit of a frosty mood. As long as you stay kind of near the boats, like the, the boat wreckage and whatnot, though, usually he won't bother you. Like, it seems like he's barred from going within, like, sir. Oh, there's a container right there. Uh, I think that he's barred from going within, like, a certain range of, like, established shipwrecks and stuff like that. I don't know exactly how it works, but if you can duck inside of a wreck, he'll usually leave you alone. I just want to go back to shore. That's all that I've ever wanted. So if I could do that without getting bit by a shark, it would be great. And look at this. I've already regenerated all my health from my shark wound. Because I'm a tough guy like that. Just got that ultra-fast X-Man, Wolverine, you know, Logan-style regeneration. Uh, I think, honestly, we should start out here. Uh, there's not a lot of wood here. That's going to be one problem we're going to run into. Oof, but there's leather and extra food right there. Oof. Okay. Yeah, we got to stay here. All right. Uh, so where's my raft at? I'm going to drag my raft a little bit further ashore just to make sure it doesn't float off on me. Uh, there will be tidal storms that will come in that will kind of like wash away chunks of the bank. Um, and they will take your raft with them. I learned that one the hard way on stream and then I didn't have a raft anymore. Luckily I had stuff laying around that I was able to repurpose into a new raft. But had I not, that basically would have been a re-roll the entire game type of situation. You don't want to lose your raft, trust me. You lose your raft, you can't go anywhere. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll grab some of this right here. I'm just going to kind of like loosely pick up all the stuff that's laying around. Uh, rocks are pretty important. Sticks are fairly important. So I'll get back with you once we've uh, collated all this stuff. Well, as far as resources go, we're not looking too bad. We're not looking too good either. I'm not mega stoked about the possibility of having to deforest the island. I tend to leave my islands looking the way they were when I got here. And then I strip all the other islands that are around so I can still have natural beauty, but all the, is the other islands don't. Uh, we've got about five sticks. Not that great. Uh, eight rocks. Eight rocks is actually like a pretty good come up, in my opinion. So there we go. We'll just kind of pile those over there. Two more cloth. It's a good thing. It's not like something that we have to have like a ton of, but having a couple of it is good. And then corrugated scrap is always something that I'm okay with. Corrugated scrap I'll always try to bring back with me because there's a lot of fun projects uh, you can do with the corrugated metal. Uh, so anyways, throw the torch on the ground real fast because it's not nighttime and we don't need it. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is we need to put together a flint nap knife. So there's our stone tool right there. If we make two of these and then we also grab a stick and a rope, we can make ourselves a refined knife or we can make ourselves a axe, which is what I really wanted to make. But we got to be level one for that. So I guess I will make the... Yeah, there we go. I'll make the refined knife. So we've got a refined knife now. That's good. That means we can actually harvest some of the things on the island that we're going to need. And in fact, one of the big things we're going to need in order to start off our survival out here is yucca plant. Uh, yucca plant, very, very useful. Yucca is going to drop fibrous threads that we can use in order to make lanyards and lashings and things of that nature. Uh, pretty much the entire game revolves around how much rope you can get your hands on. And so these will regrow about every 48 hours. But we are going to have to branch out to other islands in order to get more of it. Um, if we have three yucca plants on our starting island, that's a really, really good thing. Uh, you don't always get that. Sometimes you only get two. Unfortunately, one of our yucca plants is kind of like inside this wall of bushes right here. Uh, what that normally 
means is that you're going to lose a couple of the drops inside the bushes every single time that you harvest. Uh, if you are having trouble getting fibers, the other thing you can do is if you look around the island, there will be these little palm saplings. If you smack them, you'll get fibrous leaves. And, and so, like, you're not completely and totally lost to just the yucca plants. If you look around, you can find the, the little, yeah, these little fern plants right here. And you can whack those to get some more fiber stuff as well. They've also added RPG mechanics to the game since the last time I played. Uh, you now level up and you get stronger in various attributes that will make you harvest faster. Or they'll make you like run faster. Or they'll make you able to build and repair things a little bit quicker. It's not like a massive ridiculous RPG system. But it is a couple of things that you can check out, and you can see your levels right here. There's hunting, there's cooking, there's harvesting, there's physicality, and there's craftsmanship are going to be the different ones that you're able to accumulate over time. Like I said, it's not a massively in-depth system, but it does, I think, add to the game. You will notice that as you've played for like 10, 15 hours, your character that's like 15 hours old in-game will like harvest way faster than like your guy that doesn't, you know, who just started out. And it's kind of nice to get those little bonuses for putting the hours in. All right, so I converted all of our fibrous leaves into ropes. That means that we've got seven ropes to play around with as far as I know. And that's a really, really good start. Uh, so we need to make an axe, I think, is going to be our next task that I'd like to get underway. And so we'll make another stone tool right here, and then we will make an axe. After we make the axe, I suggest that you refine it. Uh, we can't refine it until we hit level two. So, we'll probably use this axe for a little bit, we'll craft a little bit of this, we'll craft a little bit of that, just to sort of get these levels rounded out. Uh, but for the moment, we've got all the things that we need in order to get started. I would suggest you also make some kindling, might be a good idea. Uh, so there we go, there's the kindling bundle as well. We're gonna have to make a fire once it starts getting a little bit darker. Uh, we're losing our light right now. I'm gonna pick off one of these big trees along the edges. We should be able to survive off a coconut for the first day or two. No, without having to go anywhere else, but I would prefer, yeah, dude, working perfectly. Um, I would like to get ourselves some kind of sustainability as well uh, before we really start digging in. And so let's go ahead and chop this tree up and I'll, I'll show you the resources we're going to have after we get done with it. Okay, well, it is officially nighttime. Now we've got about 12 sticks to play around with. My suggestion would be that we make ourselves a campfire and just sort of get started getting comfortable here on this island. Uh, so I'm gonna drop my fire in probably like right here. And then if I could get my flashlight so that I could let my viewers see what's going on, uh, I'm gonna need my kindling back. Now that I've got my kindling, pretty simple to light a fire. Our character uses the itsy bitsy spider method, which is uh, probably the worst way to start a fire in all honesty. That's a really, really rough way to start a fire. Like I would say your success rate is gonna be fairly gated. Uh, with like there's some people that can get that to work but like it takes a lot of practice like you really got to know what you're doing uh, easier method in my opinion is a stick and trench method where you take like a plank you're gonna like knock a hole in the end of it you're gonna put your kindling inside the end of that hole like your fluff from like your sock or from whatever you've got and then you're just gonna take a stick and you're gonna rub it down the center towards that little hole in the bottom of the plank and eventually it'll build up enough heat that it'll light down at the end but uh that takes a lot more physical strength, I guess, so sort of depends. Uh, we're going to want to put a ring of stones around this. In my opinion, anyways. Uh, pretty much every construction in the game that adds onto your fire requires you to have some kind of like ring around it. So there we go. And that leveled up our craftsmanship. Now we can go up to level 3, which makes this actually a lot easy peasier. Uh, I'm actually, let's see, how much do I have on this axe right here? 83% durability. Alright, I'm not going to upgrade this axe to level 2 until it's low on durability. Hopefully I don't forget and like mess this up. Uh, but I'm going to use the nighttime. Guess I could make a spear. I can go kill a crab. That's what the game wants us to do anyways. That, that's easy enough. Dinner, how are we looking on food? We need water more than anything else. Uh, let's start out by doing a still. Uh, so they have a solar still in this game. Pretty cool little uh, invention. We're going to need to find a coconut in order to get this whole thing put together, though. Uh, there's one right there. Perfect. Uh, a coconut and a rope is going to make you a coconut flask. It's going to be in your consumables menu. So you make a coconut flask right there. Once you've got the coconut flask, we're going to need to have three rocks and a cloth, it looks like. 
Ooh, we're low on rocks. Hmm. I was going to say, that might be a predicament, but there was another one that I missed all the way down the beach, so we were able to make it work. Uh, at this point, we should be able to go ahead and make this solar still. I need one of you. Yep. Thank you. And then I'll jump over this way, and we will grab one of you. And then we should be good. Yeah, there we go. Solar still time. Uh, this is going to give us basically an endless resource for water. The way that it works is you take some of these palm fronds right here, and then you throw them in the bottom like so there you go and what it'll do is it'll create four portions of water for you which as of right now by the time this finish is producing we're gonna need all four of those portions uh, the downside that we're forced to face right now is that we don't really have any rocks left on our island and we're really gonna need rocks uh, so let's get underway sort of thinking about how we want to gather up some more rocks and once we've got that figured out, we can either make the jump to a nearby island and just kind of like steal everything we can from there, uh, everything that isn't nailed down, or we can sort of tool around and see if we can find anything else around here. I guess I've, I'll wait till morning. Let me run around and we'll, we'll come back with the morning and I'll let you know what I've collected. We do have some options for stuff that we can work on right now. Uh, so we've got a few things laying around. I would suggest that we also make a shelter uh, while we wait for morning. Honestly, it'll allow us to fast forward anyways, so it should be pretty quick. I mean, realistically, what we're going to need is a palm tree. So if I can murder one of these guys... Oh, did you hear that pleasant sound, that tinkling sound right there? Yeah, that means that our water refiner is working. That's actually a real thing right there. Uh, that right there is called a solar still. It stands a little high. I have my doubts that if you use this one in real life that it would work. Um, it just sits too high. But really, the rough idea is... What you would normally do is you would dig about a foot down into the ground in like a square. You would put this tarp straight over the top. You put a rock in the top of the tarp right there, just like they have. And then you fill the entire bottom of the basin you just dug with non-poisonous plants. The non-poisonous part is very, very important. Uh, that's a very important part that frequently it gets overlooked. And then you put them down in the bottom of it. And what should happen is the sun, which we don't have right now, but anyways, the sun will cook the plant matter down there. The water will leach out of it, come up, condense on the tarp, and then drip downwards into a central container. You're not going to get a lot, though. Uh, the other option is water vine, uh, depending on where you are. You know, if you're in uh, any place that's, like, swampy or any place that's kind of jungly, there's a thing called water vine that exists there. And you can pull down a whole bunch of water vines and then cut them with your knife and, like, put it into a canteen. And it'll actually slowly, like, drip, like, once every couple minutes from each of those. into the. Um, once again, you're not going to get a lot, but you will get enough to, like, maybe sustain yourself and not die, uh, depending on how proactive you are. All right, so as far as our shelter goes, I don't really care where I live. If you were building a shelter in real life, you would want the entrance to be facing out... You would want the entrance to be facing out sort of like, um, you would normally, what you want to do is it's twofold. You would want it to be facing kind of like this right here. Um, not too close because you don't want to light it on fire, but ultimately the goal here is that the fire would be at the entrance to your shelter so that a predator would have to go around this and you would have your back against a wall with a spear or something like that that you're sleeping with. The other part is that if you can actually build this out a little bit further, uh, you can also make pretty good heat catch just using this stuff right here to keep yourself warm a lot of people fail to account for is that in a situation where you're surviving uh, if you don't have adequate clothing even the air being like 70 degrees outside can slowly get you colder and colder and colder until you die of hypothermia uh, surprisingly high temperatures can still give you hyperthermia uh, hypothermia that is it sounded kind of like i said hyperthermia that's different uh, we'll go ahead and go right there. We got three rocks left. We don't have a lot of stuff remaining, but we do have the very, very bare bones basics of our survival setup, which is like super cool. Like that's really, really good because ultimately, all survival is just time management. That's all that it is. It's time versus resource management, but we have a very, very nice little base set up over here that I think is going to look pretty good. Uh, we'll probably want to track down some kind of food. Uh, they want us to kill a crab. I, I feel like that's a decent idea. Um, I haven't seen any crabs around since we first landed here. Uh, we did land here, but it looked like they all gave it a little bit of the old scarper and took off. So, I don't know if we'll see them. 
Uh, it is possible that we could get a bat, but we'd have to get them when they come down. Plus, I just don't know about eating bats, man. Like, it's a rodent, technically. I don't know if eating rodents is ever a good idea. Hey, free rock. Nice. Uh, if you're wondering what the pee, pee plant looks like, that's it right there. A lot of people walk right over the top of it. If you're poisoned, this is the pee, -pee plant right here. Uh, it's going to take you a coconut flask and a pee, pee plant. You can make an antidote to keep yourself from slowly dying. Uh, the crab hunt is going pretty awful right now. Uh, this is a pretty bad crab hunt. I, I had thought we would at least see one by now, but I guess the crabs are activating their stealth fields or something. Those high-tech crabs, man, they're changing the game. I thought for a second there was a bat in the tree, and then we could just doink, stab him with a spear. But, I guess not. Uh, we got a coconut, though. Coconut make an okay meal. We can go ahead and take this right here, and we will drink of the coconut. We don't have a lime, but, you know, sometimes in life you don't have the things that you need to be prepped for. We'll go ahead and crack that thing open. We got two halves of a coconut right there. Yeah, that did all right. Be careful about eating coconut. Uh, eating coconut in this game will give you diarrhea. They added that. Uh, so if you eat too much co coconut, you'll get diarrhea. It'll leach out all your water, and you'll have a really, really bad time. Once again, another thing that ends up with you having a bad time. Uh, we have more stones. That thing's at 73%, so I really don't see a reason to break it down just yet. I'm going to try and take it easy on the trees on this island. What say we... Hmm. What say... We save our game first. Just in case the unthinkable happens. We can sleep till morning, hopefully. Our fire is going to go out, so that's just a thing we're going to have to... Oh, it didn't go out. Intradasting. That only cost me like a little bit of hunger and thirst, too, so we actually did okay. I actually don't think we slept that long, in all honesty. I think the moon was only like over there, so I think we slept for two or three hours. Sleeping rough can take a toll on you. It is not as easy as it seems. Sleeping on an incline with no pad and a bunch of other stuff, like, oof. Not fun. I've done it, but it's not fun. You're going to end up with some weird bruises in weird places. That is a fact. We've got enough fibrous leaves to last us a little while. I said we make a hop over to a different island, in all honesty. I think that's probably what we'll do next. But I think we're just about out of time for the day. So my name is Splattercat. This is Stranded Deep. This is the game that basically started off my channel. This and Subnautica were the first two ones that like really, really blew up and kind of enabled me to have a career in internet content creation. Although I think calling anything that I create content is a little bit, um, might be a little bit generous, in all honesty. Might be a little tiny bit generous compared to, like, some of the really cool stuff that other people make. But I like my little corner of the internet, and I appreciate you spending time with me here in it. I will see you all next time. If you wanted to get this game for yourself, as always, I have a link for you down below so that you can check that. And then uh, leave a like on the video if you wanted to see more. If you wanted to have a follow-up episode, it's fine by me. I can see if we can do episode uh, number two and get into a little bit more trouble. Take care, everybody. And I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet, okay?